Good morning, fifth and sixth graders. Um, this is the last lesson that I have for teaching Sunday school for the school year. Normally, I don't teach during the summer months, and this is the last lesson of the quarter. We are still learning about Peter and the early church. Today's lesson is based on Acts 12. The Bible tells us that God is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. So can, you can't even measure, right? Can't use a yardstick, can't use a ruler. Um, and God meets our needs. He, he hears our prayers. So why is it that sometimes we limit what we expect from God when we pray? Our lesson focus this week is don't be surprised when God answers your prayers. To introduce the lesson, take a look at page one of your Bible adventure. It is called, When You Least Expect It. There are a couple cartoons on the front. Read through those and take a look at the questions at the bottom of the page. Right now, you can pause the video so that you can read and of course restart after you have read those cartoons. The questions at the bottom say, have you ever had an experience like the one in the cartoons? And then, have you ever prayed for something and then been surprised when it happened? God is always concerned about our needs and he loves to hear our prayers. We shouldn't be surprised when he answers them. But even people in the early church were sometimes surprised about how God answered their prayers. Before you read the lesson, it might be helpful for you to understand um, that there are a number of Herods, H-E-R-O-D-S, Herods, mentioned in the New Testament. You might remember that Herod the Great was the king of Judea when Jesus was born. His son, his son's name was Herod Archelaus. Archelaus, there it is, Archelaus, Herod Archelaus. And he was the Herod or the king when Mary, Joseph, and Jesus returned from Egypt right after Jesus' birth, when they ran to Egypt to escape. Um, the Herod in today's lesson is named Herod Agrippa I, and he was the great-grandson of Herod Archelaus. Let's take a look at the incident from the life of Peter in today's Bible study and see what happened. Read your Bible adventures, pages two and three, and answer the questions after the reading. Um, you know, that's not just a teacher thing, but those questions just really help you see if you understand what you were reading. And as you've done that, you can, or as you're doing that or about to do that, uh, pause this video and then you can restart it once you are done with your reading. What do you expect to happen when you pray? What sort of things should we expect when we pray? Remember that God always answers our prayers, but his timing may be different from ours, and the answer might be different from what we originally wanted. On the other hand, we shouldn't be surprised when God answers as he did for the believers who prayed for, for Peter in our lesson today. The story in today's Bible study shows an unexpected answer to prayer. Here the people were praying like crazy for Peter to get out of prison, and then he shows up the door, and they don't even believe he's there. I wonder how many times we are like that too. We pray, and bang, our prayer is answered, and we get surprised about it. Page four of the Bible adventure is a prayer tracker. Sometimes God takes a little while to answer our prayers, but that doesn't mean he doesn't answer them. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says to wait, sometimes he says yes. And sometimes when he says wait, we can get really discouraged with that. But using this prayer tracker on the back of your lesson or some other kind of prayer journal is a really effective way to keep us aware that God does hear our prayers and he answers them. The key verse or the memory verse is also found on the back of page of your Bible adventure. It's from James 5.16, and it says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. It's kind of a shorty memory verse. Um, remember, first of all, that a righteous man is someone who tries to live his life or her life the right way in relationship with God, wants to please God, wants to uh, put God first in his life. That's a righteous person. 
And so if you are doing that, your prayers are powerful and effective. Memorize this prayer verse and practice it every day of this week so that you can keep it in your heart and keep it in your head. Finally, as I said at the beginning of the lesson, this is the last Sunday school lesson for the school year. I really hope, wish the best for our sixth graders. The two sixth graders that have come regularly this year are Michael Jensen and Sadie Stevens, and what wonderful, what a joy they have been to me as a Sunday school teacher. Um, I often see that sometimes when kids leave me at the sixth grade year, um, they don't continue in Sunday school. And that just kind of breaks my heart because we all know that there's so much to learn about living a Christian life, um, even for someone my age. So I know that someone who's like 12 isn't done learning yet. Um, now that there is a new Sunday school class right across the hall, Miss Elizabeth, during this school year started a class with just seventh and eighth graders, hopefully it's not as scary for sixth graders to continue. I, I hope to see you a walk in the hallway, and maybe even stop in and say hello to me sometimes too. That's cool. Um, so anyway, in the meantime, I hope you guys are taking care of yourself and do all you can to grow in the Lord throughout the summer. And hopefully by next school year, we're back at Sunday school and learning and growing together. See you guys.